Hello and welcome back and in today's video I'm going to be speaking to you all about the scientific reason behind why plants wilt. And if you live in the UK then you'll know recently we had quite a, a very cold spell where the ground was frozen solid just about for a week nearly and also over the last few years we've had quite a few dry summers um, which means that a lot of plants do tend to flop or wilt and I decided because I'm doing biology as an A-level and geography and I just I'm quite interested in all this sort of stuff I thought I would speak about the scientific reason behind why plants wilt and the science and the anatomy in the plants that causes them to flop when they, they, they have a lack of water. So before this video gets started please make sure you go down below hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon to make sure you're notified next time I upload a video just like this one. And this is actually the start of a new series called Plants Explained where I'm going to be speaking about the scientific reasons behind things that plants do and things that we see in plants. And today I'm going to run through the, the main reasons why plants wilt. And first I'm actually going to speak about a bit of background um, knowledge and facts that you're going to need to be able to understand the scientific reason why plants wilt. So let's start with these basic facts then. So plants, their aim is to get the water from the roots that are in the soil up and out of their leaves or to be used in the cells of the plant for um, everyday and sort of needed essential functions in the plant and in the cells. And the cells and the parts of the plant that actually transport this water from the roots all the way through the stem and to the um, leaves is called a xylem. And the xylem are actually dead cells. They've got something in their cell wall called lignin, which actually kills the plants off and means that they're basically just turned into dead cells that are just like a tube of water basically going up. And the reason they're dead cells is because this is better because it is stronger for the plant which means it can stand tall and rigid much easier, um, especially when it's wilted actually, because if you notice when plants wilt, the main thing that flops is the leaves. The stem stays the same, and that's because the xylem and some other parts of the stem is actually dead cells, which means they're solid wood. So when you look at wood, it's just dead wood really, dead cells. And the process that takes water from the roots up to the leaves is called transpiration. And transpiration is literally just what it does says on the tin, it's getting the water from the roots up to the leaves and out or being used in the cells. And the route that it takes is called the transpiration stream. And transpiration is a completely passive process. And what this means is that it's a process that goes on all the time. We don't even know about it. All these trees around me here, they're all doing transpiration, or not as much as now because they haven't got any leaves on them but they are doing some transpiration. And what I mean by a passive process is one that, as I said, just goes on without us knowing, and also one that doesn't use any energy at all. And that's quite the marvel of it, is that the plants, their transpiration stream, it doesn't use any energy, which is quite mind-boggling really, how it gets um, the roots from the roots all the way up to the leaves, even on huge trees, without any energy at all. And water has some key properties that allow this to happen. The first one, cohesion. Water is very cohesive, which means that each molecule, molecule of water has a weak hydrogen bond between one another, which helps them move in basically a chain. So if one drops out of one of the leaves, then all the others will be tugged through the plant. Water is also quite adhesive, which means it's sticky basically. So if you realise there's a, there's a water drop on a table and you put your finger, it will suck to your finger and you can pull it away a little bit and that's a mix of adhesion and cohesion. And actually, if you have a glass of water, or even better, a test tube of water, and you look at it flat, like that, you'll notice that the water sort of is like that, and it sticks to the sides of the whatever container it's in. And this is called a meniscus, the curve that you see. And that's because there's sort of, it's not a completely smooth surface down the side, so the water sticks to the sides and then dips down in the middle. And the last one that helps transpiration, or the last main one that helps transpiration, is also that water can be moved by capillary pressure. And you may have heard the terms capillary action, capillary pressure before. And what this is, is say you have a big bowl of water and you put a thin glass pipe into the middle. You'll notice that because of cohesion, adhesion and capillary pressure, the water will move up that pipe. So you'll see the water level in the pipe is higher than the level in the bowl. And that's because the water's one, it's sticking to the sides of the, the pipe, 
and also it's tugging each other so they're tugging each other up basically these water molecules and also capillary pressure is when the atmospheric pressure pushes more down on the water that has the biggest surface area so the one in the bowl so the water pushes down on that and if you think of it the water pushes down on it and it makes it go up the pipe and this is essentially how plants transpire or how water gets from the leaves or to the leaves from the roots because the xylem are really 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 small microscopic basically pipes that um, go up the plant which means as I said with the pipe then um, and you can do that with a straw and stuff to stick it in a bowl of water and because the xylem is so small because the sm smaller the pipe the more it moves up naturally with that passive um, process which means what the xylem being really really small means they can go really far up and it's the relationship of these three main properties and processes to do with water that help the water to get from the roots to the leaves in plants and in the transpiration stream as I said earlier on in the video so this is some of the key knowledge that you'll need to be able to understand this video a bit better so if you want to you can go back and make notes over that um, I've left sort of you'll see on the video timeline there'll be some chapters that I've broken it up into for you but now I'm going to get on to why plants scientifically or why they actually wilt and why we actually visually see them flopping so now on to the actual reason or the reason we see plants flopping when um, they can't get enough water or whatever so actually the visible flopping that we see or the flopping the wilting is because the plants in the cells they don't have enough uh, water in the cytoplasm which is the liquid in the cell to be able to be rigid and full so that means that the cytoplasm as I said the liquid in the cell within the cell membrane that means that this shrinks when there's not as much water in there which means that the cytoplasm itself shrinks and pulls away from the cell membrane which means that the cell is allowed to sort of be a bit more mobile and floppy and move move a bit more and not be as rigid and solid as I said uh, and it's quite, it's quite difficult to understand at first, but when you get your head around it, it's actually quite interesting. And a cell of this state, where the cytoplasm is pulled away from the membrane, is called a plasmalized cell, which means that the cell membrane is basically pulled away from the cell membrane. And the cause of this lack of water can obviously be many things, but there's three main ones. One is that it could be that the ground's frozen, which is what we've experienced here in the UK or in Wales recently. The other, number two, could be that the ground is far too dry. So in a drought, for example, when we've had last year, we had a mini drought or the year before where there, where there was an even worse drought. Um, and it's these, the dry conditions in the soil where it's either too dry or too frozen, too solid, that the plant get any, can't get any water because the plant needs available water, which is water that is in a liquid form. So when it's frozen, it's solid and it can't go through or the, the molecules are solid and they can't go down small enough to get through the cells and to diffuse in. And when it's dry, there's obviously no water at all to diffuse or diffuse in by osmosis, I should say, into the plant. And there's also, there's also a third one, as I said, and that third one is actually if a plant has a disease, there's some disease that um, stop the plant or block the transpiration stream that stop a plant getting from water so things like this could be club root I think club root can do that and I think um, powdery or downy mildew can do that as well on cucumber bits and it's the frozen ground reason that I was going to mention a bit more about which is why the conifers in things like the tiger biome or tiger not spelt as in the animal but uh, as in t-a-i-g-a -A, uh, it's the conifers that have pine needles they don't have leaves they have needles for a reason and that's because one they can drop snow so they don't get too heavy and fall over and also their stomata they will be the lack of stomata they don't have as many stomata which means that the, the water can't leave the plant as quickly and i'd just like to mention the stomata they're basically the pores on the underside of leaves that let the excess water out that hasn't been used by the plant and these can open and close depending on weather time of day um, and the cells that actually control whether they open or close are called guard cells. And actually, if you have your own microscope, a bit like I do, then uh, it doesn't actually have to be that strong. Then you can sometimes, on some plants, with bigger stomata and bigger pores on the underside of the leaves, you can actually see, see them under a microscope. Um, but that's a whole other video about my microscope and things. 
So if you want to see more sciencey videos like this, then make sure you go down below and hit the like button and let me know in the comments. And if plants, like this kale, are in a wilted state for too long, then they will die because there isn't enough water there to keep the cells going. So the cells will start to die and then they'll start to decompose. But if the ground thaws out and melts and all the ice melts, then the plant should recover if it's not been too long. And if you have dry ground and you water your plants with a deep watering, then they will recover. But if they have a disease, they're unlikely to recover unless you can treat that disease easily. So to summarize the today's video, plants get water by three main processes and key properties actually of water, cohesion, adhesion, and capillary pressure. And you can look more into these on YouTube as well if you wanted to afterwards, because I just did a brief description today. But I hope it, I helped you to understand a bit better. And also plants wilt because there's not enough water in the cells to keep them rigid, which means they sort of flop a little bit. And the reason that the cell stays rigid and stays upright is because the xylem and other cells in there are actually dead because of a chemical in their cell wall called lignin. And there's three main causes for wilting. Dry ground, frozen ground, or a disease that interferes with the transpiration stream in a plant. So that's all that I've got for today's episode of Plants Explained. So I hope you can be around for the next episode. If you want to be notified next time I do upload a video, then make sure you go down below, hit the subscribe button, as well as the little bell icon, to make sure you're notified next time I upload a video. But for now, I hope you did learn something, and I also think this series is probably going to help me learn something as well, because I put a lot of research into this, and also it's going to help me with my revision for my biology and geography A-levels. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.